Good morning, Prime Outcast Collective. This is Tabby Cat Meow with a collage of me getting and taming a sister of Parvos. At the end of this video will be a lexicon, a vocabulary of clues that I've tucked throughout this video. If you're a member of the Prime Outcast Collective and you discover the secret, you will win the sister of Parvos that I converted with a 27% toxin tenant links. It's a very fun sidearm that has a unique feature of marking enemies and all shots will automatically go to the target like that weapon demonstration seen in the fifth element. So let's jump right into the basics first. You'll need to get Requiem Relics. You could do Kuva Siphon missions if you don't have any to start, but the majority of my relics are dropped from Thralls or Hounds when I secret mercy them when I get the Murmurs. These relics give you a chance of Requiem mods. Just like a Lich, you will need to figure out which mod and what order you'll need on your power zone to unlock the confrontation with your lich or sister. There is a science behind the combination, and if you bear with me, I'll explain my method later on. There are eight Requiem mods that you can get from the relics, plus a ninth all mod, which you can only get from the final Secret Mercy before the confrontation. The all is just like a Joker wild card. It'll take the place of any of the other eight. Before you spawn your larveling, put any three Requiems you want, doesn't matter what you pick. Each time you complete a Secret Mercy, you're getting more progress to learn one of the correct mods, just not the order it's in. To spawn a Sister larveling, you'll need to meet all the requirements first. You must pick a Corpus Ship tile set that is level 20 or higher, and use the Zenith Granum Crown, the solid blue one, at the hand statue on the ship. Since it's the Granum Void, I recommend using Azorus, but it's not necessary. I will always recommend the Zorus. It's a great weapon, but in this instance, you need the Zorus to free the captives in the Void and add more time to your counter. Since the game continues while you're in the Void, pick a mission that doesn't have a timer on it, like a survival. The capture mission on Hydra Pluto meets all the requirements. Go ahead and clear your objective and then head to the nearest Golden Hand statue. Let's skip to the good part. Using the Zenith Granum Crown will put you in the Nightmare Granum, which is the toughest version. While in the Granum Void, you must get rid of a minimum 25 Spectres. You don't need all 75 like the objective says, but while you're there, you might as well try to get the Protea, Spalta, and Strofa parts that only drop at 75 Spectres. To break the cages the captives are in, you need to prime the Zorus. I forgot to remove Helios's weapon before starting, so we're in a contest to see who could get a higher score. The way you prime is to hold circle until it releases, then press R3 when it's near enemies to do an air burst. The specters have two phases. First phase, you need to release them from their shell to get to their nougat center. Air bursting the ghostly shape will make the three dots next to your reticle go from blue to orange. Once all three are orange, it's primed and ready to go. Go to the nearest captive and air burst their cage. To save effort, try to make your airburst count and draw specters near you. You will gain 20 seconds on your timer for each captive you free. Occasionally, you'll see golden triangles after airbursting enemies. These will add 10 seconds each. If you want to get the 25 minimum specters, it's all good. It took me a while to figure out how to solo the void and get all 75 specters. Um, when I mean a, a while, like three missions. Another thing to consider when you are spawning your larveling is your progenitor. You will get a weapon with the damage type associated with the frame you use to spawn it. I have a short video about progenitors here if you want to learn more. I'm using Saren as my progenitor, so I'm 100% guaranteed to get a toxin weapon. You can spawn a larveling using one frame from the damage type you want and then switch back to your favorite frame for the rest of your sister journey without changing the damage type. Once it's spawned, it can't be changed. Watching my Grand and Void run, you see that I'm relaxed with it, and I will get all 75 Spectres because I used my Zor smartly. If you pick them off one by one, you will not complete your objective. Try running in one direction for a little while and let them follow you. Then you can turn 180 and have them grouped up. This is being efficient. The charged airburst has a very large radius and it's very easy to prime it a second time when you burst a large group. It'll just take a little grouping and some timing. A lot of people will tell you to use Mesa for her peacemaker ability, taking all the aiming out of the equation. The thing about Mesa is her damage type is radiation, which is great if you want a radiation weapon. If not, pick a different frame.
A little while after leaving the granum void with at least 25 kills, your larveling will spawn. When you down your larveling, an image of a weapon will show above their head. You can either secret mercy them to spawn your sister, or extract to skip that weapon until you complete your confrontation. If you abort during this time, the weapon will be in the rotation again. You can use this to get the weapon you want without RNG completely ruining your life with the same weapon multiple times. I chose to accept this weapon, so it's time to finish up here and head back to my ship. Yay, I got a Stralta Barrel. That's one of the hard ones to get. This is when I get to meet my sister and figure out the way to best her. On the left side of the screen is all the information I have about the weapon and what kinds of damages can hurt or bounce right off of her. She's immune to slash damage, which is a bummer, resistant to viral and cold, there goes my normal setup, but she's weak to heat. There are several other types of damage not listed here yet. As she gets stronger, her immunities might evolve, but for now, they are fair game. I can use toxin, electricity, corrosive, gas, magnetism, blast, impact, and radiation, and they will all do damage. Maybe not as much damage as heat, but she's not immune to any of them. If she had an ephemera, it would be visible on her. Sisters have corpus blue ephemeras. I didn't get lucky this time. Knowing what will hurt her down, I can mod my weapons to give me the best chance possible to take her down. I decided for corrosive, not because it's ineffective on corpus, because I am way stronger than her and anything would work. Corrosive is best against grenier armor and fossilized infested enemies. Toxin would have been the best choice for this fight, but it isn't going to be much of a fight. This is the build I chose to go for my Ignis Wraith. I just went heat with lots and lots of critical chance and damage. For enemies over level 40, Latum is my primary weapon. When I said I was way stronger than my sister, it's because of my Latum build. Right after you spawn your sister, you will find the planet Gosh, she is controlling is glowing blue. If you were to not pursue her, Already, she Carvel, will take sir. most of the credits from any of the mission rewards world. you complete in her territory until you force her to leave. My very first Lich didn't, I didn't pursue it for two years, but Liches take more than credits. They'll take almost any reward on your recap screen. When I actually vanquished him, I was a millionaire and everything he stole was returned to me. The same goes for sisters. When it comes to spawning for altar hounds, I do things a little differently. I take my time and go off the objective path to the far corners of the map. I have found that it sometimes forces them to spawn like I triggered them. I've joined many random mommer farms just to be very disappointed. Everyone rushes to the end, only getting a few murmurs, so I stop doing them in groups. I get more murmurs by going slow. All of the footage you are seeing was started at 9 a.m. and finished the confrontation at 11 a.m. solo. You can tell me murmur farms with a group is better, but I'm not going to believe you. If you are on a corpus map that has at least one section outside on the planet, you have a chance to spawn a dropship that is carrying an ambulance, which will drop animo beacons. This will give you access to the Hades Pluto assassination mission where Trinity parts drop. It's a pretty rare occurrence, so I'm going to take a minute to see if ambulance spawns. It didn't this time, but now you know that this is one of the places where you can get the beacons from. At this point, my murmur meter is about half full, but I'm a pessimist. I feel like a failure if I don't get this far by this point in the mission. It's said that only three hounds will spawn per mission, but on the missions where your sister spawns, 
she can spawn up to three more once per health bar. Good tactic is to wait until she spawns one of them down and mercy it before you shoot at her. If you down her before giving mercy to the hound, she will destroy it. Another thing I do differently is after I down her, I don't mercy her. Not until I have almost two murmurs filled. There are enough nodes on your planet to do this. The first time I perform a secret mercy on her is when I actually know the first requiem and I'll have enough murmurs to get the second requiem by the time I mercy. There is a method to this and I promise to share it later. My sister showed up pretty early in the fight, but I'm not ready to move ahead yet. She also scared me, and I panic fired on her before the hound spawned in. Oops. This is when I realized that Gloom was affecting her recovery, so I had to turn it off. Now she spawned in her hound and I can get my chance. The third mission hound didn't spawn, so it wasn't a total waste. I'm not gonna mercy her, so I'm not gonna get a second hound. From my experience, the faster your sister or lit shows up, the more wrong your Requiem mods are. The ones that take forever to show up, I usually have the correct mods, just maybe the wrong order. Now you know one of the secrets of getting murmurs a little faster. I bet you've been on a murmur farm and the players whose lich or sister shows up, but they didn't mercy it. You'll know why. How could you? Where they haven't been invited. I'm just checking if her immunities have changed. You usually won't until you rank them up with the wrong horizon configuration. All of these missions are about the same. Do your objective and kill your hound. I wanted to include the footage to give me an opportunity to discuss and explain certain things that you might not know, because Warframe isn't known for explaining a single thing beyond the tutorial. You can add my knowledge to what you know and fill in the blanks, for what we call the grind. And it is a grind. Need materials? Go grind. Need weapons? Go grind. Want that new shiny? Go grind stuff so you can grind it in another mission. I'm not complaining. I actually enjoy it. There is always something to do. I also get upset when people suggest just buy it with platinum. Some of us aren't pulling in delivery boy money to buy platinum every week. Some of us are too timid or lack knowledge on how the unstable trade chat works. If you just buy everything without earning it, are you really playing or are you just paying? Save your platinum for stuff that you can't get for free with a little elbow grease, like slots and accessories. I've earned my first Requiem mod reveal, and I'll learn if one of the mods I picked are correct or not. I'm still not done collecting murmurs on this planet. It will make sense if you keep watching. My first unveiled mod is Boss. The ones I picked was Ul, Lope, and Nitra. My stranger shows up only when I forget she exists. Don't ever stop thinking about it. 
The configuration for my Parazon that you see now, I did not use this for my first Mercy. I just wanted to add one of the correct ones and get one of the ones I thought wasn't correct out of the way. After getting all the Kuva and Tenant weapons, all 35 of the ones that you can't buy, I figured some things out on my own. I usually get all three correct without using all at all in three to four tries depending on my luck. I rarely get one of my Liches or Sisters to rank 5. I could use the all if I didn't have a mod that was unveiled, but I use all as prizes as in giveaways when I have farmed Liches for other giveaways. I haven't done many Liches or Sisters in a while, so I'll hang on to the single all I have for now. Because I've been on the same planet and haven't mercyed my sister yet, she will spawn more often in missions now. I'm still not ready to move on just yet. I didn't follow my own advice and she blew up her hound so I couldn't mercy it. Or it just got stuck in the door. If you can't tell, there's a lot of gunfire going on and I can't stop and check for a pulse. Nothing else is going to happen with the rest of this fight, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed through it. I'm about a third of the way to my second murmur. A couple of more missions and I'll be ready to proceed. If you've farmed liches before, you will notice earning murmurs is a lot faster when you do it with sisters. I got used to doing survivals as one of the best murmur farms from Liches. All 10 thralls spawn in 5 minutes guaranteed. Only 3 hounds spawn for sisters, but it's a real hard habit to break. My sister is getting pretty angry right now. She will show up in every mission from now on until I mercy her. But she's not the boss of me now, and she's not so big. I'm going to skip ahead a little to my first mercy, then I'll explain the best method of figuring out the passcode to unlock your confrontation. My known requiems at this point are Fast and Nitra. After this mercy, as promised, I will show you the science behind the mod configuration. On the first mercy, I put the first unveiled mod in the first position, and the second mod in the second position. I can put Ol in the third position to cover the unknown mod. There's a slim 0.29% chance I will get it correct first try, because there are 336 possible configurations. If I'm lucky, I win, and I go to confrontation. If I get the first one correct, but the second one wrong, I automatically know the correct order is the first mod, the third mod, then the second mod. The game will be over the next time I mercy. My sister is now a level 2. If I got the first mod wrong on the first try, I move the second mod into first position, first mod into second position, and the third mod I just learned in the third position. If I get the first mod correct, but the second mod wrong, the only solution left is second mod, third mod, first mod. Game over. I win next mercy. My sister will be level 3. If the second mod in the first position is wrong, I know for a fact that the third mod goes first. Now it's a 50% chance if I put the first and the second mod in the correct order. If you get the third try wrong, you just need to flip the last two. You have a 100% chance of it being correct your next mercy, and your sister will be level 4 if you follow this method. Unless you want to fight your sister at level 125, there's no reason you should need more than 4 tries. When I first started with Liches and Sisters, I would just guess. A lot of times I would have more than 5 guesses incorrect. I'm not proud of that, but it happens. Then I remembered I have a logical mind and I figured out the most efficient order with the least amount of tries. I just needed to stop mercying at the very first chance I got. 
This was my second fight, and the second mod was incorrect, so I have a 50% chance to get it right next try. My sister is level 3 now, and if I miss, she'll be level 4. I'm feeling pretty confident about my configuration, so I'm going to force her to spawn with a beacon. You can get these if you vanquish a lich or a sister in a confrontation. Let's pop this beacon and see if I get lucky. I just leveled her up and she's not mad enough to randomly show up, but with this beacon my sister has no choice but to appear. It's no surprise that I got the first one correct. I logically deduced that it would be. This part had me sweating because before now I hadn't been able to learn what the second mod would be. Phew! This is my third fight with her and everything is coming up roses. I didn't need to use my ult and we're going to a confrontation. The next stop is Neptune Proxima. If you haven't built or ranked up your Railjack, you will have to bum a ride with someone who also has a confrontation there. Everyone on board the Railjack also needs the passcode they just unlocked. You can't go to that mission without one. I'll make a video showing the best and fastest way to rank up your intrinsics in a future video, so check back later. Because she's only level 3, this is going to be an easy fight for me. If she was level 5, the enemies would be level 120 or higher. Still not a problem for me, but if you're bumming a ride, you probably need the help. Keep playing and watch the Prime Outcast Collective videos to help you get better at the game. I have a full squad of elite crewmates I bought from Ticker. They are strong and capable. You'll need to max the command intrinsics to purchase them. They can fly the ship for you and help you destroy radiators, but that's still a little wonky and they get it wrong sometimes. You can have them repair your ship, man your guns, and repel invaders. It's worth the investment, which is pretty sizable. Sisters and Liches borrow abilities from other frames. All of my Toxin sisters have had Malt from Saren, Prowl from Ivara, and Renewal from Oberon, which are all Toxin frames. The fourth ability can be Lurch, Stampede, Teleport, or Vault. Everything I've done in the last two hours of pursuit has led to this moment. I must decide if I want to convert or vanquish. If I convert, I do not get the weapon, but I now have a sister that I can trade or put on my railjack. If I vanquish, I get the weapon that will be found in my foundry when I get back to the orbiter. If she has an ephemera, either way, I get the ephemera. Decisions, decisions. This lady is mine now. If you found the clues I left in this video, she will become your lady. When I return back to my ship, my sister has drafted and mailed me a formal letter of compliance. She denounces Parvus Granum and her sisters and pledges her undying allegiance to me and my bidding. So thoughtful. If there was an ephemera, it would be mailed to me. If I had vanquished her instead, a letter saying to look in the foundry for it, uh, would it come? The weapon she had was 27% toxin. The percentage for the Tenet and Kuva weapons range from 25 to 60%. You can farm the same weapon again to perform a balance fusion to increase your percentage, but I'm not going to go over that in this video. I've confirmed that Alliance Leader Crow5716 will be handling that, so I'm holding you to it. This topic has been one of the most requested for my Alliance. 
My goal is to help you help yourself by educating you on the things the game will not tell you. It will make you a stronger player overall because you just aren't copying someone, you're actually thinking for yourself. If you made it this far in the video, you got a lot of helpful information in one sitting. It would be helpful to me if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel. This is Tabby Cat Meow with the Prime Outcast Collective. I'll see you tomorrow morning.